भगवदगीता नाइन पॉइंट फोर मैं तमिद सर्व जगद व्यक्त मूर्तिना मत्स्था सर्वूता न चाहम तेवस्थि मैं तमिद सर्व कृष्ण फ्रॉम दिस वर्स इन द गीता नाइन्थ चैप्टर स्टार्ट डिस्क्राइबिंग his relationship with the material world in the first three verses he is glorified the knowledge that he is going to share so here he states now he is going on moving on to the details of that knowledge one aspect is his inconceivable relationship with the world this is part of the guhya gyan that he is giving so he states here maya tatam idam sarvam maya by me tatam idam sarvam idam idam this sarvam all of it this jagat so all of this universe by me avyakta murtina it is pervaded in my unmanifested form matsthani sarvabhutani in me all of existence all living beings are situated na chaham teshva vasthitah Achaham, but I am not in them. So here, many important points. First, let's look at it. This first talks about God's omnipresence. We know that among the defining attributes of God are omni. potence omniscience omnipresence so omnipotence is he is all powerful omniscience is he knows everything omni presence is he is present everywhere so how is he present mm. by his pervasiveness in his avyakta murtina now this is a intriguing phrase avyakta murtina cause form murti can usually be translated as form and form is usually not thought of as unmanifest form is something which is manifest to us so uh, for example when we make a murti murti is a replica and effigy figurine statue whatever it is when we make a form of someone then that basically means that we have it visible to us that is actually that is the essential meaning of the word form that something is visible perceivable to us if that is the case then what does avyakta murti na mean so the word avyakta we we seen that it has been used by krishna earlier in the previous chapter that in He used in eight point twenty, and before that in eight point eighteen also. So eight point eighteen it referred to matter in a manifest and an unmanifest form. So when the universe is created, the matter comprising it is in a manifest form. When the universe is destroyed, the matter create matter comprising it goes into an unmanifest form. And then he talked about. That was अव्यक्ता व्यक्त सर्वा प्रभवत्यहरा आगमे 
रात्रागमे प्रलीयंते त्रैवाख्यसंख्ये and then beyond that in beyond that in 8.20 he used it as parastasmat bhavo nyo vyakto vyakta sanatanah yah sarveshu bhuteshu nashyatsu navinashyati so there he used the word avyakta to refer to parastasmat bhavo nyo so he is talking about the spiritual world which is beyond the vyakta and avyakta and then he is talking about 8.8.21 that avyakta akshrityukta stamahu paramam gatim yam prapyana nivartante tad dham paramam mama there he has used the word avyakta to characterize the spiritual world and this avyakta is not unmanifest matter this is that which is transcendental to matter that which is spiritual so the word avyakta has has different meanings in different places now what does it mean in this context avyakta murti na so we could say that it refers to unmanifest form now this can refer at one level to krishna krishna's form in general is unmanifest krishna is transcendental and because he is transcendental he is not perceivable to us directly with our senses so of course krishna's personal form is perceivable through our spiritual senses and krishna's personal form manifests as the deity that is perceivable to us even through our material senses but here what is being referred to is not the personal form but the impersonal form avyakta murti na so now usually the word form is your he is used here not exactly in the shape or not not exactly to refer to shape but it is used to refer to manifestation that the lord has many manifestations and one of them is the impersonal manifestation so in his impersonal manifestation when he exists that manifestation is something which is beyond that is beyond nature and in that manifestation there is that uh, so it's unman it is beyond nature it is not material it's transcendental but still it is beyond perception also so krishna pervades all of existence in his avyakta murti na so this answers the question why he is if he is all pervading why is he invisible to us because he exists in a impersonal form may in a form which is not perceivable to our vision avyakta but then after that also he says that matsthani sarvabhutani matsthani that all living beings are situated in him this means that god is not mm, disconnected from the world he he is the sustainer they are situated in him na chaham tesh vavasthitah but i am not situated in them so this verse can refer in a broad pattern to the three manifestations of the absolute truth brahman uh, parmatma and bhagwan the first verse the first two lines refer to brahman the third line to the parmatma mat so maya tatam dam sarvam jagad avyakta murtina this refers to brahman who is manifested everywhere 
who who is sort of not manifested who is who pervades who is the manifest who is the manifestation of gods god who pervades everywhere but is unmanifest to our vision uh, and then there is parmatma who is the sustainer of all of existence who is sustainer of all living beings and then there is bhagwan who is beyond this world who is transcendental in his self existence beyond this world in his own abode so in a nutshell these words can be said to be referring to all these three manifestations of the absolute truth and the distinct relationships that they have this with the with this world and the living beings in this world so one is the all pervasive manifestation the other is the immanent manifestation and the third is the transcendent manifestation the impersonal the immanent and the transcendent are all three referred to in this single verse in a capsule form thank you